Good morning, church. Um, it's good to speak to you this morning. And uh, I just want to share a few uh, thoughts with you um, from the Psalms this morning. So have you ever had the situation where you plan on doing something and um, then something happens and uh, your plans change? Well, that's the situation I found myself in last week after listening to Ben's preach, uh, our first online uh, preach. And uh, it brought to mind something that I've read recently in a different translation to what I would normally read. And it got me really thinking, and this is what the verse is. Psalm 27 verse 8 in the English Living Translation, in the English Standard, sorry, translation says, You have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face do I seek. But this is the translation that I read it in, which had a real impact on me because it's different. In the New Living Translation, Psalm 27 verse 8 says, My heart has heard you say, come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So I want to think for a few minutes this morning about what our response should be to that beautiful invitation. Come and talk with me. My heart responds, Lord, I am coming. So what does it mean when God gives us this invitation to seek his face? If we're looking at the English Standard Version, we know God's spirit. So he doesn't have a physical face like we do. But the Hebrew word for face in the Old Testament is often translated presence. So when we seek the face of God, we're seeking his presence. The call to seek God's face was often issued to his people because they'd abandoned him and needed to return to him. A person's face reveals much about his or her character or personality. We see the inward emotions of a person expressed outwardly on your face. You've ever seen your child looking frustrated? You can tell by their face. If they're happy, you can tell by their face. It's the same with everybody. We recognise a person by looking at their face. And in a sense, your face represents the whole of you, the whole person. And for the writers of the Bible, the human face could represent that entire person. So when God beckons us to seek his face, he's inviting us to see more of his character, more of his personality. It says in Exodus that God would speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. Good friends know each other well. They can predict what will each what will uh, each other will like or dislike, how they will view or react to a situation. So the invitation in Psalm twenty seven verse eight says that we are to seek God's face, or in the New Living Translation, come and talk with Him. Whoa! Hold your horses. I want you to think for a minute to and to consider the beauty of that fact, the holy. Almighty God says to you and me, come and talk with me. Have we become so used to the idea of Jesus being with us, Jesus being our friend, that we've lost this sense of awe that that friendship with God should produce in us? This God, who the people in the Old Testament were afraid even to look at, couldn't look at, invites us into a closed relationship with him. So for a few minutes, uh, we're going to consider what our response should be to this invitation. Come and talk with me. My heart responds, Lord, I am coming. So first of all, our response should be intentional. The New Living Translation says, come, the English translation, English standard version says seek, but both verbs are intentional. We need to be intentional about seeking God's face or, and his presence because it won't happen by accident. How do we do that when our world is full of noise and distraction? 
Recently, I've read a fantastic book by, by John Mark Comer called the, Ru- Ru- uh, the sorry the Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. It's it's a fantastic book, but in it, it talks about our need for silence, for solitude, for Sabbath, for simplicity, for slowing all intentional ways of helping us commune with God. And one thing he said uh, in the book that was quite a challenge to me, he said, just imagine if we spent as much time um, with God as we spent watching TV or on our phone, accessing social media, how might our lives may be different? How much time do I spend reading about Corona compared to the time I spend seeking God's face about the situation we find ourselves in. I've looked up the word seek in the Bible and every time when God asks us to seek him, he always follows up with the promise that he will reveal himself to us if we take the time to be intentional in our seeking. What a promise. If we're intentional in our seeking of God, God promises If you seek me, you will find me. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me. So our seeking must be intentional. Turn off the TV, put your phone away, seek God, come and talk with him. So firstly, our our response should be intentional. Secondly, our response should be relational. You know that you're talking to someone you know well when you feel comfortable in the presence of that person. You maintain eye contact. You stick close to each other before social distancing came came in. Uh, Both parties are interested in what the other person's got to say. One person isn't turning around and having a conversation with someone else. You both recognise that what that person has to say is important. Sometimes you just don't have to say anything. It's enough to be in companionable silence with that other person. Sometimes companionable silence is better than talking. And that's the type of relationship God wants with us. When we seek his face, we seek his presence, we put other things aside and try to give God our full attention. Have you ever had the situation where you're trying to talk to a person and that person doesn't look up from the book or the laptop or the phone that they're using? Doesn't it put you off? Doesn't it hurt you? Do you think God is any different when we're trying to pray and our phone goes off and instead of leaving it, we check it just in case it's something really, really important? How many times have I done that and I forget that I'm supposed to be spending time with God and I look at my phone and then I get distracted and then then I I look at something else and I look at something else And um, then I've forgotten completely that I was supposed to be spending time with God. God wants us to seek him without distraction. He wants us to give us, he wants us to give him, sorry, our full attention. So our response should be intentional. It should be relational. And lastly, our response should be mutual. Have you never have you noticed that the New Living Translation doesn't say come and talk at me? Have you ever do you know anybody who when you meet only talks about themselves? The conversation is all about themselves. They don't even stop to ask you how you are. We all know people like that. But how off-putting is it? And uh, does that type of behavior want to make you spend more or less time with that person? Definitely less time. And why do we think God's any different? How much time do we spend with God giving him our shopping list of prayers and um, then just leave his presence? Spending time with God just because of who he is And because we love him, that's what Ben was saying last week about ministering. Ministering means just spending time with God with no agenda. To be content to sit in his presence without speaking or asking him for anything. For someone who uh, who like, like me, who talks a lot, 
talks for their living uh, and just generally likes talking a lot, uh, that's a really hard thing. It can be a real challenge. But have you ever heard the um, have you ever heard the uh, the saying that you've got two ears and one mouth? So you should do double the amount of listening than you do for speaking. And maybe that's a good uh, ratio for what we do in our time with God. Double the amount of time listening to what he's got to say, to just enjoy being in his presence than speaking. Can you imagine God trying to speak to us, but he can't get a word in edgeways because we're too busy talking? God might well have something wonderful that he wants to impart to us, and yet he can't get a word in edgeways. I'm reminded of Matt Redman's song, which is inspired by Ecclesiastes 5, verse 2. This is what it says. You are God in heaven, and here am I on earth. So I'll let my words be few. Jesus, I am so in love with you. And I'll stand in awe of you. Jesus, I am so in love with you. Oh, what about this from Noel Richards? To be in your presence, to sit at your feet, when your love surrounds me and makes me complete. This is my desire, O oh Lord. This is my desire. To rest in your presence, not rushing away. To cherish each moment, here I would stay. This is the essence of seeking God's face. To have nowhere else you'd rather be than sitting with the Lord. My prayer for me and for you is that at this time when our life is completely different, all of us will answer God's invitation. Come and talk with me. And my heart responds, Lord, I am coming. May God bless you and uh, keep you until we see each other again. <laughs>